What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is going to be my comprehensive analysis and review of the new weapon refines for Linus, Cliff, Kaze, Hellbendi and Samartana. I've already covered the weapon refines and remix of Legendary Marth, Tiki and Hector in a different video so the link to it is going to be in the description right below that like button and in this video I'm going to be going over the best builds that you can run for these units and I've also made a change in the presentation so let me know if you like it or not in the comments and with that said let us begin. So Linus gets a weapon refine because at start Raven got the Basilico's weapon refine and Linus pretty much started with that. He didn't really get a weapon refine of his own any time, he just started with one. So now he finally gets one and this allows him to be a lot more unique than Raven. So this weapon refine allows him to have plus 5 attack and speed during the combat and minus 5 speed and defense buff on the foe during the combat. And the weapon refinery part also gives him a pseudo panic effect to foes, speed and defense. So this is pretty similar to Sparking Tome of Azel or Sneering Axe of Legion. It can be considered like an in-combat panic of a sense because it does punish foes who have visible buffs to their speed and defense. So with this weapon refine, he doesn't really want to run any kind of lull skills because he actually wants the opponent to have the buffs so that he can make use of his weapon refine. So this weapon refine is pretty simple but it is very useful for him and allows him to do his role better. He can of course be compared to Resplendent Raven and at this point after the weapon refine, Linus gets effectively plus an attack and speed so he ends up at 71 attack and 54 speed compared to this kind of Resplendent Raven. Not to mention he can just uh, have no problem against opponents who have buffs to their speed or defense. On the other hand, Raven does not have anything of that nature and is Basilico's weapon refine and he also loses out on the bulk while Linus just has 10 extra defense. So Linus is going to be better functionally because of this weapon refine if he can afford to spend grails and trade fruits. Raven doesn't really require those resources and he's going to be in the normal summoning pool. For the build section I've made this kind of presentation change where I will be moving the spotlight to the build which I'm talking about. So I hope this can give a context of what I'm talking about. So let me know if you like it or not in the comments. I just tried to make this kind of change. The first build is going to be a budget build utilizing Desperation, Speed, Smoke and Blade Session. And in Slotty you can keep Brazen Attack Speed but I personally do not like Brazen skills in Slotty because they're pretty much dead skills until you reach the threshold HP. So ironically after escaping the Life and Death Weapon Refine, on a budget I guess you could run that or run Swiss Barrow if you want to. And if you're trying to invest into him a bit more then you can invest with Flashing Blade 4 and Null Follow Up from the Divine Code section. These builds can work at lower investment but more Dragon Flowers and Merges will always help. So he can be a Gale Force unit with this kind of build and also have Blade Session Sacred Seal. Null Follow Up is really useful for making use of his speed productively against units who have Follow Up Negation and as it is he does not want to run a Lull skill so Null Follow Up is a nice skill that you can have access to from the Divine Code section. If you want to invest heavily into him then you can run a Surge, Sparrow, Attack Speed, Menace build and this allows him to basically have a mini Aether with that Luna and that's really helpful because his weapon refine does have that HP threshold so this can keep him healthy while also giving you a lot of offensive power. Then you can invest into him with this kind of expensive build by running close call in the slot but if you don't want to have null follow up. Obviously against units who have follow up negation it is going to be a bit annoying but you can also run odd tempest in the slot C because he doesn't really need time pulse to have a 410 gale force. He already has that with his weapon. So odd tempest can be helpful in increasing his mobility and if you're trying to spend your fullerets on him then attack speed boons are the obvious choice. Linus is really amazing in arena because he punishes the foes who have buffs to their speed and defense and this is where Fang Basilico's weapon refine really shines. So with G Duel Infantry 4 he can be run with null follow up and he can have a pre-charged ruptured sky by running time pulse. He can obviously run a gale force build but this is really good for damage output because he can trigger ruptured sky twice in a single round of combat in the player phase. In arena everyone and their mom runs some kind of buffing skill and if they're buffing up their speed and defense then Linus can make use of his weapon refine. And then competitively speaking the other use of him is going to be in Aetherite's offense as a gale force unit. So he can be used with flashing blade 4, he already has a 4 turn gale force which is really preferred and he can run infantry pulse with his high HP to pulse down the other units. I do feel like he's better in the Astro season because in the light season we already have dagger as it is so that is going to be a bit of color overlap. So in Astro season he does complement dragon pretty well and you can also run him with a build using time pulse and quicken pulse so that you can have 2 turn gale force. So this can be really useful if you are using a lot of savage blow or you just want to have a gale force that you can trigger in a single hit. 
Kaze gets a decent weapon refine for a unit in the 3 star 4 star pool which allows him to use the speed and resistance productively. So this weapon still retains the minus 1 special cooldown from the barb shuriken and this gives him effectively plus 8 attack speed and resistance during the combat so he doesn't really get any kind of defense. And the best part about this weapon refine is going to be flashing blade 4 which allows him to get the true damage which is really helpful because Kaze doesn't have the highest base attack and with this weapon refine his playstyle is basically in the player phase but his low bulk is going to be a really big problem he doesn't have very good hp and he doesn't have very good defense if he got some kind of wind sweep effect or maybe damage reduction like maybe kagero then it could have been a bit better but even at max investment with this weapon refine Kaze is going to be pretty frail on the physical side side. But on the magical side, he's going to be really bulky and with this weapon refine, he can abuse Iceberg, Glacies and do a lot of damage with this high resistance. So that is pretty much his playstyle to be used in the player phase. Just proc Iceberg, Glacies, do a lot of damage. And he can also be used with an AoE build because he does get that minus one special cooldown and he also gets the flashing blade 4 effects. So even if he's facing a foe with guard effect, he's still going to be able to loop his special using special spiral. So for his builds, you can just go with a Desperation build. This can be run even on a budget, but I feel like Kaze is the kind of unit that you try to use at higher investment or max investment because he really appreciates the extra stats. So he can be run with this kind of build by using Blade Session to Sparrow just to add into his offensive power, and Iceberg is the perfect special with Desperation. You can also use him with an AoE special. While he doesn't have the highest attack for the AoE damage, you can still stack it up with double life and death and maybe something like summoner support. So he can hit 69 attack and like I said before, he is definitely one of the better dagger users who can use this kind of AoE build because he doesn't really care about the guard effect on the enemy and can just loop specials with special spiral. So if you are a big fan of Kaze, then you can certainly use this build to beat a lot of the abyssal maps with just 3 dancers. You can also use him with Mirror Impact just to make him have a lot more resistance so that he can boost his damage output with Iceberg. So that's definitely the stat which you can stack up. And he can be pretty fast even if you're not running something like Susparrow as you can just run Joint Drive Speed and Blade Session to boost it up. So he's going to be really fast to make use of Desperation and he's going to be firing off Iceberg from his effectively 60 resistance. Competitively speaking, I don't think there's a lot of room for usage of Kase. Because Soth, Yuri, all of those other dagger units are going to be much better in Aether Raid's offense and even in Aether Raid's defense. And Kaze, I feel like, doesn't really fit too well. I guess you can use him with Disarm Trap to set up Gale Force in the light season, but still, other dagger units just do it better by having higher bulk and higher HP. And low HP can definitely be pretty annoying in Aether Raids because you'll be getting hit by even some lower level tactics rooms and panic manners. So I feel like competitively, he's best used in Arena with this kind of build because he can trigger Ruptured Sky even against units with Guard and he can also run a higher cooldown special but I feel like Ruptured Sky definitely helps him quite a lot for a low cooldown special and you just want to stack up his defense with attack defense form and just stack up his attack with joint drive attack. Hellbendy was really unimpressive before but now he gets a really excellent weapon refine which makes him into a much tankier and a much much better enemy phase unit. So his weapon is a lot more consistent now, it can also work in the even turns by having another condition and of course on the odd turns it will work. So on the odd turns or if he's within 4 spaces of a foe, he can buff up himself and allies for plus 5 to all of these stats and this allows him to be a pretty nice support unit while also buffing himself up. And he essentially gets plus 10 attack during the combat and inflicts minus 10 attack debuff on the foe during the combat. So the minus 10 attack debuff is really huge for making him really bulky because he already has pretty good mixed bulk. And the extra attack stat is always nice for securing KOs. And the final effect from his weapon refine is going to be follow up negation which allows him to be a lot more tanky and just prevent the doubles of the opponents unless they have now follow up or they are faster and have an auto follow up skill. So Hellbendy is a lot more tanky now and can put his mixed bulk into good use. Hellbendy still wants to have other effects like guard, auto follow up and healing and you definitely want to invest into those with his passives. On a budget you can run Hellbendy with sturdy stance 2 and quick repose. He definitely wants to have quick repose to have an auto follow up in the enemy phase and he can run steady breath and ignis because if he runs bonfire then he's not going to be able to retaliate back with it in a single round of combat if the enemy is not able to double and a lot of enemies are not going to be able to double him because of the follow-up negation. So that's why Ignis and Steady Breath is a lot better for just higher damage output and the fact that he can trigger it in a single round of combat. 
He can also invest heavily into him and being a enemy phase tank he does appreciate all of the bulk that he can scale off with the dragon flowers and merges. And like I said before he definitely wants to have quick repost and guard effect is also really helpful against units who have null follow up and who might have 2 turn cooldown specials. So Sturdy Sans 3 is pretty much one of the best slotted skills for him. And again you can go with Steady Breath and Ignis as a special but you can also run Mystic Boost for healing and just run some other special. Bracing Stance and Lull Attack Defense is also an option but you're not going to be able to uh, you know, run Steady Breath like the other builds. And Lull Attack Defense debuffs do stack up with in-combat debuffs to make him a lot more bulky. And Bracing Stance does just add into his mixed bulk but he does miss out on some damage output of Sturdy Stance 3 and he can just run Crooked Post as a Sacred Seal. He's not gonna be able to trigger his bon he's not gonna be able to trigger his bonfire against enemies who get their follow prevented by him, but he's at least gonna be having it charged up for the next combat. Hellbendy can also be used in arena because he provides you with really good support by buffing up your entire team on the odd turns or if he's just within four spaces of a foe. So that can be really good because you don't really have to waste any kind of turn rallying each other up. And you can run some other skills on your units instead of running some buffing skills. So he can be run with Crooked Post and you can run other slotsy skills but I feel like Panic Ploy is a really good uh, skill with his high HP and certainly helps in Arena. And Steady Breath, Ruptured Sky or Steady Breath Ether are good combos. I don't like Ruptured Sky that much on him because he just debuffs the attack of the opponent by so much. So the damage of Ruptured Sky definitely gets affected. So you can use a special like Aether which is higher cooldown but it can heal him up. You can still run Ruptured Sky if you just want to focus on the one shots. Another competitive use of Hellbendy is to be used in Aetherate's offense with a far save unit. So the far save unit can just focus on the ranged matchups and stop the sniping on your backline while Hellbendy can just handle the melee matchups in the front. And attack defense unity is a really good skill to be used in Aetherate's offense with Hellbendy. He does lose out on the guard effect from a stand skill but attack defense unity really helps you in the Astro season if you get debuffed by Mirabilis or in the light season where Node is going to be having attack speed menace so you can just get some extra attack for free. He can work in both seasons but of course in the light season he can also be really useful. And I've calc this he does not have too much trouble against Legendary Seagard as long as you can stack enough speed on him to prevent his auto follow up. And if you can do that then Hellbendy can kill Seagard with this kind of Ignis. You're not really able to run 2 turn specials like Moonbow or Glimmer because they're not going to be enough to kill uh, you know, Seagard who does have weapon strangle advantage and he's also really bulky. In the Astro season he's going to be fast enough most of the time to prevent the follow up from Seros and follow up himself with his Cook Repost. And finally at super max investment you can invest into him with distant stance providing him with some extra resistance and also join distant guard. So he can be used with this kind of distant counter build essentially but he does miss out on the stance effect or the unity effect that he could be running in the slot A. So if you want him to take on mages then this is the build. And again a high cooldown special with steady breath is functional and you can just run some kind of healing with either steady breath or ether or just running mystic boost as a sacred seal. Cliff gets a pretty good weapon refine that gives him true damage, extra stats and also makes him bulky. So with this weapon refine he effectively gets plus 9 to all of his stats and he also gets 15% true damage based on the opponent's attack per hit and this also applies to his AoE specials. So this kind of true damage is extremely helpful for his damage output because it will scale off on the opponent's attack and as time goes on we get units who have got even more absurd attack than the last one so this scales off really well against those kinds of units. So if he's facing a unit with like 70 attack then he pretty much gets 10 true damage per hit which is definitely pretty nice and it is essentially like a ruptured sky on every single hit except for the fact that it is true damage. And he also gets the guard effect with this weapon refine and the guard effect is really nice because many opponents either run a one turn cooldown special that they can retaliate back with or they have some kind of special fighter steady breath and a 2 turn special. So the guard effect can be really helpful for a generalist like him. His weapon is a lot more flexible now and he just needs to have one more visible attack than the opponent to get plus 5 to all of his stats and the true damage part of his weapon refine. Keep in mind that this does say at start of combat which means that they're going to be comparing the visible attack stat. So ideally you do not want to run skills that can increase visible attack stat of Cliff and reduce the visible attack stat of the opponent like attack speed menace is pretty much an example of that. You definitely don't want to run something like that which can make it a bit harder for him to trigger this effect. 
And triggering this effect is honestly pretty easy because Cliff doesn't have the highest attack and against most of the modern units, he's gonna be able to easily trigger this kind of condition. So I don't think you really need to go out of your way to lower his visible attack stat. Just run skills which can give him the in combat stats and he's gonna be a pretty happy unit. This weapon refine pretty much makes him into a generalist by being offensive with that ruptured sky, having good speed to avoid doubles and double himself, and also having good enough bulk, so you can function in both phases. So this weapon refine helps him a lot, but there's still a lot of competition in the blue mage infantry pool with stuff like Mikaya and Gunnevar. So for his builds on a budget, you can just go with speed defense link and reposition from Norn, and you can run savage blow or just some other slotty skill, it's pretty flexible. And you definitely want to run something that can boost his attack and speed like attack speed solo or blade session as a sacred seal because he really needs some extra attack in the combat and he's always going to be triggering his weapon effect when he's that low merge and overall cliff does like to have merges because he does make use of all of his stats but still on a budget you can run a build like this or even run him with an aoe build now even though he does want to have the lower attack stat than the opponent he can still get the true damage on his AoE hits with his weapon refine. So if this is something that you're interested into, then he can go with life and death and special spiral and have flashing blade. He's not going to be having the best AoE damage, but this is still an option that his weapon refine opens. I still wouldn't really use him over something like Ophelia or the other mages who have AoE specials, but just an option for Cliff at lower investment. If you want to invest heavily into him, then you can run attack speed solo 4 and have null follow up. I definitely feel like Null Follow Up is the best lobby skill for Cliff because he wants to do more damage even against opponents who have Follow Up Negation and Null Follow Up really helps you with that and with the guard effect that he already gets from his weapon refine, he's gonna be pretty bulky against many of the modern auto follow up units in general. So like I said in the example, you don't want to run Attack Speed Menace or Attack Resistance Menace on Cliff and that's why he's one of the better users of Defense Res Menace even though he only hits on the resistance side of the opponent. This is to make sure that he can have the self buffs to his defense and resistance while also getting extra damage output. And Mystic Boost is a really good sacred seal to keep him in the HP threshold of his weapon refine. You can run a 2 turn cooldown special if you want to trigger it in a single round of combat, but you can also run some other hard hitting specials like maybe Bonfire that can make use of his bulk. At higher and max investment, you can certainly run him with close foil or close reversal because he's going to be having enough defense to take on many of the melee matchups and he also gets the guard effect so that makes him a pretty nice tanky mage in the enemy phase. So that's an option and you can go with null follow up of course which is going to be a bread butter for cliff with any kind of build and self healing from Mr. Boost is always helpful. You can also use him in Aetherite's offense competitively as a unit who can be paired up with near safe tank. So Cliff is going to be taking hits from the range opponents as the near safe tank can do the melee matchups. So because of the guard effect, again he's going to be a really strong mage tank and you can invest into his resistance if you are trying to spend florets on him. So he wants to have attack speed unity and ether rates offense so that he can get more stats and a lot more attack which is going to be helping him so much. Node is always going to be activating attack speed unity with her menace skill, so it is just perfect for that use. And null follow up is really helpful against units like Bramimont who have auto follow up. I think specializing units for their matchups, either range or melee, is a really good way of using them with save units in ether rates now. So I wouldn't really use him with close follow or close reversal in ether rates. Instead, to specialize him into a range tank, which he's definitely capable of doing because of the stat ball that he can be with his weapon refine. And finally in arena you can use him with B dual infantry 4. You could even just invest into his attack stat because let's be honest, in arena enemies are going to be having really high attack so that is not going to be a problem to trigger his weapon refine effect. And like I said before in the slot C you can always run a joint drive skill or defense res menace. Stacking up his defense is going to be helping him in the physical matchups which are going to be pretty common and ruptured sky along with his weapon that already scales off his attack is definitely pretty nice. Summer Tana becomes a very unique and solid support unit with her weapon refine. So this refine basically gives her super guidance which allows any ally within two spaces of Tana to teleport to two spaces within her which is absolutely amazing for the mobility support. So she's like Halloween Noe but in reverse, she pretty much provides that guidance to the allies. And this can apply to any movement type so even cavalry units can just jump two spaces in front of her. She also gets plus 9 attack and speed during the combat with this weapon refine and provides the allies within 2 spaces with plus 4 attack and speed in combat buff. 
so she pretty much functions as a support unit and essentially having that joint drive attack and speed in her weapon refine. So her main use is gonna be in Aether Raid's defense or just as a general support unit for moving just the units around. In Aether Raid's defense she can be used as a rally trap to enable some teleportations. This example pretty much shows you how you can use it in practice and this can be useful in the Astra season where you do not have note. So this can help you extend the movement of your team but at the end of the day if the opponent has got some kind of good save ball then it doesn't matter from where your units come from they're gonna be tanking them with that far save skill. So that's why I feel like overall Bright Catria is gonna be a lot more superior support unit who can enable triangle attack which can definitely be pretty annoying for the common save ball teams. Tana on the other hand pretty much relies on catching people off guard but like I said if they do have a save ball team then it doesn't really matter where your units are going to be teleporting from. With that said she's going to be a pretty unique unit with this kind of weapon refine and even on a budget you can use her as a support unit for something like arena assault just with a standard fury desperation build and having double drive attack so that you can support your allies. And again the best usage of her is going to be in ether Raid's defense with rally trap. And you can just run her with Windswave because you do not want her to die against the common blue tanks like Brave Hector and the physical tanks in general. So this allows Tana to live which can definitely enable some teleportation so Windsweep is really helpful in that. And you can run something offensive and slotty like attack speed push for. And aerobatics is going to be necessary so that she can teleport as a rally trap. You can also use her in arena at max investment especially if you carry a lot of armor units on your team because they really appreciate the movement buff from her super guidance and she herself can just function with a Fautre skill. She's not going to be doing anything too unique offensively and she's mostly there for the support. And finally at super max investment you can run her with this kind of build with attack speed catch 4 and blade session giving you the max offensive power and also running a Fautre skill for the mobility of herself. So overall I feel like these weapon refines are pretty solid all across the board but they're not going to be anything too meta influential I think. If you're using these units then this is going to be a pretty nice buff to you and uh, Summer Tana is pretty interesting but she's a seasonal unit and I don't think I'm going to be seeing her that much in Aether Raid's defense compared to the Bright Catrias. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did then make sure to share this video with your friends who are trying to build up any of these units. And if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really really enjoyed you can always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more Fae analysis videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Raven after seeing a weapon refine of Linus that he wouldn't be able to get. So that's it I'll see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and have a great day.